Well, g'day there, everybody, right around the world. Thanks a lot for joining me on this Monday afternoon market recap. I am much better compared to that of how I was last Tuesday. I know it has been obviously some time in between uh, weekend or weekday market updates. My apologies for that. I have been rather unwell, but as you can tell, probably in my voice at the moment, I am very close back to 100%. Now, where I would like to begin this Monday afternoon market recap is that of the US dollar. What I'll do, I'll recap the US dollar, gold and silver, and then I'll move into the overall market structure, followed by some of the recaps in our top 12 individual trade list. The reason for doing this at the moment is because the US dollar and of course gold and silver is something that I've been speaking about on this YouTube channel uh, for quite some time. It has been a number of weeks, if not months. We're really starting to see that bounce uh, begin to take place on the US dollar. This is coming from, of course, that relationship in terms of the chart pattern of an inverse head and shoulders. My apologies for that illustration, but as you can see on my screen, that is really the formation of the pattern itself. It has been in progress really for about three months. We broke out above it towards the end of late October, early November, but since then we've pulled back down and essentially what we have done is just retested initially what was once that inverse right shoulder. As you can see, as we've come back down to around this 92.75 pivot just below that of 90, uh, sorry, 93, you can see that we're starting to see the bounce. Now, if I bring up those oscillating indicators, not those exponentials, but the oscillators, you can see how they flipped back to the positive side, especially that of the MACD, the moving average converging, uh, the moving average convergence divergence, my apologies. Now, I was looking for it to actually firm up above that neutral point. I actually pushed them down below that towards the end of November over here. But as you can see most recently, momentum in the US dollar it has now shifted to the upside. And since then, we're starting to build some nice gains into these original positions. If you wanted to trade UUP, that is personally what I used to trade when it comes to directional movements and that of the US dollar. As you can see, we've had two entries, 93.39 and also 93.60. I expect the US dollar over the coming weeks, if not months, potentially into the first quarter of 2018 to eventually overcome this 95.22 breakout entry which is then going to take the US dollar a lot higher from where it is currently trading, of course, at the current junction. Now, what does this mean for gold and silver? Well, the reason why I've been placing so much focus, I guess, and analysis on the US dollar when it comes to potentially that uh, trend reversal, which is shaped up and is taking form and is beginning to reverse is because, <coughs> pardon me, as you can see, I'm still not 100%. But as the US dollar continues to appreciate in price, it's going to be that of a significant headwind in general terms to the commodities markets. Now, as you can see, it doesn't really come as a surprise that as the US dollar has strengthened, again, as it's gone through the back test of that right uh, inverse shoulder, that we're starting to see the breakdown take place, not only in gold, but also silver. So if you pay attention to the actual breakdown trigger, it was placed here at 119.99. So as you can see, we're currently trading at 117.98. We have made just over $2.00 on that GLD trade, but I am still expecting that particular trade to move a lot lower if the US dollar continues to strengthen. Now, the same is true for silver. Personally, I am not in silver, but it is still a fantastic trade. 1582 and then 1521 were the two entries when the US dollar strengthened. As you can see, we are very close to that first target at 1474. If you are in the trade, I suspect that silver will eventually break below this level if the US dollar continues to uh, strengthen. But in the meantime, of course, allow for market volatility, otherwise known as market noise. So it wouldn't surprise me to see it more or less get stuck here around 1485. Who knows, potentially it may bounce a little bit and retest some of these higher uh, support areas, which have such broke, as you can see over here in the month of May. And also in the month of August, it bounced off as support and over here in May, this now will act as resistance in the future. So pay attention to this pivot. I'm not calling for silver to rally back up into this price. But if you are to see a little pullback in the US dollar take place, that is going to be against the trend direction. The trend direction looks to be shifting. The macro trend direction for the US dollar appears to be up. And that's going to be, again, some significant uh, headwinds for both silver and gold and also for the oil markets as well. Now, rounding this back into I guess the discussion with the markets over the weekend, I laid out obviously my views on the markets and how we're looking to trade them. Long story short, uh, when I essentially look at the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ is most important to me at this particular point. One, because it's built some pretty decent resistance up here, just shy of 6,900. As you can see in the top right hand corner of my screen, we're currently trading at 6,868. This picture here, I've seen it before and I've seen these types of I guess scenarios play out uh, over a number or a series of times in the past. Now, this to me doesn't look all that constructive. When you see these long day Mobozu candlesticks 
And especially when I uh, sort of shift to these oscillators and see the markets, or at least the oscillators, trying to reset, what appears to be that of a bounce at the moment uh, should be, in my opinion, interpreted uh, with a little bit of caution. Now, really the golden key, so to speak, when it comes to if you want to enter into, say for instance, the diamonds, or if you want to jump into the SPYs, I've made it very clear that for me, that key, so to speak, is going to be contingent on, of course, the NASDAQ breaking above its resistance area. So at the moment, although I do have positions in the diamonds and the SPYs, uh, before I will add to those, or at least look to I guess, add or at least build new positions in the NASDAQ. I want to see the NASDAQ break above 6,921. Write this figure down and I'm going to show you why that is. When I start looking at the big tech companies at the moment, I mean, this is the chart of the SPY, but when I bring up that of Apple, for instance, it's no surprise that uh, the, the type of movement that we're seeing is somewhat reminiscent of the broader market indice itself, that being, of course, the NASDAQ. What appears to be the case at the moment is that Apple is potentially moving into that of a double top or potentially that of a triple top. Now, I don't want to go out on a limb, a limb pardon me, and, and, and sort of say that definitively at this point. Of course, I'm not going to do that. But what we've appeared to be doing is essentially sort of testing that neckline. Now, at the moment, it's holding. What is interesting to note, and I also pointed this out over the weekend, is that volume is still trickling out, not only of Apple, for instance, but also of the broader market indices themselves. So again, a lot of people out there, and I understand why they're doing this. They're calling this some form of a bull flag breakout, and it does fit of course, the characteristics of a trend continuation. You can see these exponential moving averages, they're following along very nicely with price. Every time we come back down and uh, test, sometimes we don't actually even test that rising 10 exponential moving, they are still acting as support, as a rising cloud-like um, formation of support. But what is interesting to note is that volume is still trickling out of these market indices. Now, as I round back into Apple, pay attention to volume, it is still rather limited. Uh, we have a nice candlestick today up $3.25, but along with the NASDAQ, I want to ensure that this potential double top, or if it turns out to be something else, uh, in order for this to be negated, so to speak, uh, the beginning sort of construct of that potential chart pattern, you need to see price action actually pierce above, break above, close above, and then continue above this general area up here. So you can see my uh, trigger, so to speak, on Apple. It is quite a distance above current price action. It's up here at 176 and you can see there's a theme amongst not only Apple, but also say for instance, Amazon. Now Amazon hit our target at 1,200. This was from the breakout originally at 1,125 after earnings when we recognize this pattern over here. We've had two subsequent entries since then. Again, we hit our target, but Amazon and Apple, although they are looking okay, they're not something that I'm essentially rushing into at this particular moment. Again, this goes back to my suspicions on the actual NASDAQ and what is currently under construction on the NASDAQ. Of course, I want to see these companies break above the resistance areas. Now, that will most likely work in, I guess, um, in synchronicity, so to speak, with these individual large tech companies leading the way higher. Now, another decent trade for us has been Boeing Airlines. The breakout was 267. We've had an additional entry at 279. Today, we pulled back a little bit. We are down about $3.80, but this is constructive. I wouldn't be too concerned about this individual candlestick. We have seen similar candlesticks during the breakout. Every time this occurs, uh, we have seen, again, the continuation to the upside. So we'll just deal with that, of course, moving forward with Boeing Airlines, but not enough to act on at this particular point. Now, going into Baidu, <coughs> pardon me, my apologies again for this, but it looks as though we're going to try and come back down for the third time and retest the support area. If we choose to do so and hold just above or just below 230, this is going to be a pretty decent trade up to 250. It's something that might actually trigger for us in the month of December. If this is that of a resistance swing high, a very short-term resistance swing high, this is going to be where essentially we place that bullish trigger once we come down to support and start to see uh, candlesticks show up and those oscillators really move into oversold territory before they flick back up to that buy side uh, off from that support area. Now, also continuing the conversation, we've had Caterpillar. Caterpillar has been a fantastic trade for us, not only recently, but for the majority of 2017. You can see all the way back here at 111, 115, 116, 119. I mean, 121, all these past trade entries. Here we are at the moment. We're trading just shy of 145. Again, most recently, the breakout at 140. I'd just be holding Caterpillar. You know my sort of concerns 
or at least the way in which I'm looking to trade this moving forward and where those stops need to be placed on that trade. Now also COP is still bouncing off from that support area. Not a whole lot to keep you updated on. This is that or very close to that of a shooting star, but um, again, not enough to act off at this particular point. I'd just be sort of sitting in there along with CVX. These two uh, are somewhat similar in the construction of their charts, uh, but not enough action or at least... Um, structure so to speak to actually be looking to aggressively trade i do have a, a an order on cvx above 122 this is on the premise of course that we do break out of what appears to be that of a bull flag and if we do successfully retest and hold this pivot coming in here at about 119 if i bring up the exponential moving averages you can see for yourself that we're sort of doing that sidestep otherwise known as the bull flag as we allow these exponentials to catch back up to the current price of cvx so that's a nice trade under construction now again moving back into the same type of discussion that I've just sort of transitioned through with you with Apple and Amazon. You can see that Google again is bouncing. It's holding off from the gap support. Also the retest of that old resistance area. This is all really nice. But what is somewhat concerning to me, and again, this is, um, this is quite prominent uh, amongst a lot of market leaders across the board is that volume continues to trickle out of this. So although I am optimistic on Google eventually breaking above this level, pay attention to what happens. If we see a large down day, in tech over the coming days, perhaps sometime this week, on elevated volume, it's going to be a major signal for you um, for potential sort of a, a more deeper sort of material pullback on the cards for December, which sort of flies in the face of, I guess, the performance of and in the month of December, which has been uh, traditionally very good. Each calendar year for the month of December performs uh, very well. All right, that's generally you know the nature of the trading in the month of December, and we'll see what if, if that's to hold true for the year 2017. Now, Goldman Sachs, it really didn't do all that much today, down 44 cents. We do have a doji candlestick, not a whole lot to update you on. IBM, again, holding the back test. This is constructive. This has been a trade that we've been in for a number of weeks now. This is just holding those exponential moving averages. So again, stick with it. This is sort of a slow momentum trade, but it is still looking quite good. Netflix at the moment, retesting the pivot. Very interesting trade set up on that. I went into great detail over that over the weekend. And also, I'm very, uh, sorry, not surprised. I'm very happy of course, to see the candlestick that just set up on Tesla today. We do have a long white Marabozu candlestick. This is exactly what I've been looking for to essentially pierce above this candle just here and to take us up potentially as high as about 340, okay? If you see Tesla come to 340 and then really throw out some major reversal signals, this may be the trade uh, or the final major trade of 2017, but also a very, very profitable trade to welcome in the calendar year of 2018. Be prepared for a major reversal to take place on Tesla if you see a rejection around this pivot up here at about 338. We're not there yet. We're trading at 328. We still have about 10 to $12 to move. Uh, it did come on pretty decent volume today. This is above the average uh, sort of daily volume that we look for when it comes to Tesla. But this is exactly what I've been looking for. I've sort of been championing for this. And again, it brings us essentially one step closer to where the nucleus of the trade is going to form on Tesla moving forward. Now, the final stock that I can update you on, so to speak, and this is not the correct stock. I want to bring up Facebook's. So my apologies for that. You can see for yourself, it's still continuing to bounce. Although we did close down 38 cents, <coughs> pardon me, this is still a very healthy uh, type of chart setup. If you pay attention to the price action since late July, we've been holding this, um, or we've been consolidating, pardon me, until the month of October, where we broke out above this. Now, what has happened most recently is that we've just closed the gap, definitively speaking, uh, which has been open, so to speak, since late October over here. So this pullback that we have seen, this very sharp, this very sudden, this very volatile uh, sell-off has essentially run its course. And now we're seeing again the flip side, the parabolic rise back up to those past recent resistance areas. Now, open gaps, they don't have to fill, but in Facebook's case, they did fill or it did fill. And as such, we're setting up for, again, in my opinion, a major breakout, of course, only on um, only if we see, pardon me, the NASDAQ break up above its resistance and also to see uh, these past market leaders begin to move, of course, uh, the NASDAQ higher, which will be, of course, the key which unlocks the Dow Jones Industrial Average and also the S&P 500. Now, if I bring up the Russell 2000, this has been a little bit concerning to me. Uh, personally, I just want to update you on this. I mean, we broke out above that 1,450 pivot, which was good. We hit that resistance area. We've pulled back down to support, okay, which is fantastic as well. We held support. Now, again, we've just set up a new series of higher highs. 
and also higher lows. So if I just color coordinate this for you, you can see for yourself, we're sort of doing the, uh, you know, walking up the steps, so to speak. Uh, but what is interesting to note is that we, after the sudden sort of sell-off, we've gone parabolic and we've been left with a series of pretty interesting candlesticks that we very rarely see. We've got that of a hangman at resistance and also a shooting star the following day, both with extremely large wicks in both directions. One to the downside, indicating that of essentially buying pressure at this particular location. It is a little contentious, but at the same time, this upper wick establishes that of selling pressure. So again, if you combine these two candlesticks, you're left with a very, very large high wave spinning top. Imagine that was a perfectly straight sort of vertical line. My apologies for it. But you do have a major, major candlestick uh, reflecting indecision. So it's very important to see what happens. Volume is still trickling out of the Russell 2000. So pay attention to this. This is very important as well. And just to close this, we've got the transportational average, which again, held our support down here at 9,500. We broke above 9,620. And again, off we went to the races. Again, we've established that next higher high. So it looks as though our theory, so to speak, between the transportational average and that of the industrial average is still confirming. It's saying to us and suggesting to us that everything is fine according to Dow theory and the tenet of Dow theory, which is, of course, is that the industrials and the transportational average uh, should confirm one another. That is fantastic. But again, just rounding this sort of uh, market recap um, full circle, my hunch is telling me at this particular point, I've seen this set up before in the past, not only on the NASDAQ, but also on individual companies. When you generally see these types of candlesticks with the market as overbought as it currently is and doing everything it possibly can do to actually reset or at least short term uh, consolidate, generally this leads to higher volatility. And I just want to sort of, um, you know, warn you about this and at least put this on your agenda or radar, so to speak, because again, in my own personal opinion, you need to have a criteria uh, that must be satisfied to your own personal standards before you start jumping into a bunch of trades or, of course, jumping into even uh, directional trades on the indices themselves, right? And that's just my own personal sort of uh, safeguard before I feel comfortable to do so, okay? So on that note, everyone, I'm going to say farewell to you. Uh, I'll be back again most likely tomorrow for another market recap. All the best until then. It's James signing off on behalf of Pivot Point Trading. Goodbye.